My name is Chad Ald. I'm a front end engineer here at Yahoo. Work uh, on the Buzz marketing team, and uh, I co-authored the PHP Loader with uh, Adam Moore. And so uh, today we'll be giving you a little introduction to this. It was uh, just recently released several weeks ago, so you may or may not have played with it yet. So what is it? It's a server-side utility. Uh, it's useful for loading YUI components onto your page using PHP. It is a standalone component. It's not shipped as part of the standard YUI download. Um, downloaded separately from the same place, though. And just want to give you a little overview of what the structure of that actually looks like. The API documentation is contained inside the download. Uh, same API doc format that you're used to. Um, there are a bunch of examples uh, included with the download. There's a, a lib directory, and inside this lib directory uh, is a meta folder. And this meta folder contains the metadata that the loader uses to uh, understand how to load components onto the page. And we're going to talk more about that. And then there is the uh, loader itself and some test suites in here. And there's also a combo handler. Uh, we'll cover a little bit more about that in a minute. So why use it? Um, helps simplify resource selection. It uh, does automatic dependency calculations for you. You can count on it to give you reliable, sorted loading of those dependencies. Uh, it gives you, uh, it allows for less metadata to be sent over the wire. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. But today, when you're using uh, the front side, lo the client side loader, we have to support that by sending a lot of metadata over the wire so that the, the client side loader understands how to calculate dependencies on the fly. Uh, using the, the server side loader, we ship that metadata, it's on the server, and so the calculations can be made before it even hits the client. This one's arguable, but uh, it simplifies library upgrades in that you just tell it what version of YUI when you use, and you can change that version number without changing any other files because it will figure out the paths to those files. Um, but of course, during upgrades, there's obviously more to think of than just the version number, but uh, if it's a simple 2.7 to 2.8, it may be as simple as changing the version number. A 2.8 to 3.0 would be a little more complex, obviously. Uh, it will help you optimize your page load times via things like the aggregate files, the roll-ups, uh, and combo handling, either local combo handling or the Yahoo CDN. And lastly, it will integrate with your existing modules. And so we're definitely going to go over some examples of that, but you, you can uh, take custom modules that you've written today and have the loader use those as well. So in addition to being a YUI loader, it's a generic uh, loader that can understand metadata that you give it and load your own utilities as well. So dependency calculations, question you probably have, can I already do this? You can. Uh, and the way you do it today is probably one of two ways. You're either using the uh, dependency, uh, dependency configurator, uh, where you basically go on and hand select the components that you want to use. And then it generates the uh, copy and paste code for you. And there's also a tag for uh, the dynamic loader, if you want to use the front side loader rather than uh, copying and pasting uh, the individual files. <coughs> Blowing up what, what the copy paste method looks like. So by sele hand selecting those components, we're going to use these same uh, resources throughout the presentation just to kind of keep it consistent and less confusing. So in that, in that example, I selected you know, fonts, resets, grids, tab view, uh, and then also the Yahoo DOM event element and, and tab view uh, resources. And so uh, you know, typically, you'd copy and paste this directly into, into your, uh, your document. Another, another option is uh, to use the dependency, the, uh, the uh, front side client loader, where you just load in the, uh, the loader file, and then you create an instance of the loader class passing it the components that you require. And then this uses that front side metadata that we talked about that we have to ship over the wire to do those calculations on the fly. Uh, and then it inserts all that into the page dynamically. <coughs> Here's a basic example of how you do this in PHP Loader. So all of that becomes four lines of code in PHP. We include the, uh, the loader, which is, which is the PHP class that does all the magic. You create a new instance of that class. You pass in a string, which is the version number of the library that you intend to use. This corresponds to the metadata that we ship with the, stand, uh, the, with the component download. Um, we currently ship 
uh, 2.8.0 and 3.0, but we'll continue to make metadata available as new releases come out, and we can always go back if you need it. Um, and you pass, then you call the load method, passing in the named components that you want to uh, load onto the page. And then you just simply echo out. One of the methods available is the tags method. And this will grab all of the resources that have been calculated, all the dependencies, and it will just output them in one shot. So more, m most likely, you would call this uh, tags method in the head of your document, since it's going to output CSS and JavaScript resources, most likely. What's that actually look like? Same thing we saw before. So instead of uh, handpicking all the components, we just specify the ones we need, get the same output. Uh, those are CSS resources, and then our search JavaScript resources. And I just want to point out that that's, uh, by default, that's nine HTTP requests that are made. So I want to cover uh, some of the options inside the constructor to that PHP class. So the class is Yahoo Util Loader. And there are four parameters that go into this constructor. The first one is the only one that's required. And we've already seen it. That's the YUI version number. And this corresponds, again, to the YUI metadata that you intend to load uh, so that it knows how to calculate the dependencies for the page. The second parameter is the cache key. Um, the loader will make use of uh, PHP's APC, the alternative PHP cache, if, in fact, it's available. So once we do those calculations, we can cache that off, and then we don't, don't have to do those uh, calculations, additional requests, so to speed up the performance. <coughs> it is calculated for you, like I said, but um, you can override it if you have reasons to do that. Um, the third parameter is a list of modules. So if you need to load in custom modules, and we're definitely going to cover how you do that a little later, but uh, it's essentially an associative array of uh, custom modules that you pass in. And finally, there is a metadata flag. If you're, if you're just using it generically and you're not loading uh, the actual YUI metadata or, or YUI components onto your page, you just want to load custom components, you can tell that you don't want to include the YUI metadata, and obviously it just skips loading that. Some of the configuration options that are available to the class. Uh, the first one is the base. And this allows you to specify a location for the YUI build directory. So if you've put, put the actual library locally on your server, you want to reference that. By default, it will, it will serve the files, uh, the base path. It will serve the files from the Yahoo CDN. There's a filter option. Uh, some by default, when you load these up, you will get the minified version of all the CSS and the JavaScript files for performance reasons. But in, uh, in staging environments or development environments, it may be useful for you to pick up the debug files uh, or, or the uh, unminified version of those files. And so you can pass a filter with a constant, either the YUI debug or the YUI raw, to pick those up. There's also an allow rollups. This is on uh, by default for performance reasons. but instead. <coughs> So in the original example you saw, we, we said we wanted Yahoo, DOM, event, reset, font, grid. And so we got uh, six requests in that bit. Here, obviously, it knows, the loader knows that those three files for the JavaScript can be rolled up into this one, and those three files for the CS CSS can be rolled up into this aggregate file. Uh, and lastly, we'll talk about for now is the, uh, the load optional. Uh, some components have optional dependencies because um, they're common use cases. So an example here would be if you select tab view and you choose to load the optional dependencies, you'd also pick up things like the selector, connection, and a few others. And this is off by default. So the question is, do those uh, options seem familiar? They should. If you've used the dependency configurator before, uh, it's basically the same set of options that you see on the dependency configurator. The ability to override the base, to turn rollups on or off, to combine files, um, to change your filter from minified to debug or raw. Same idea. So we've covered uh, a few of these. So let's, let's get into how it helps optimize the page load times via uh, rollup files, the aggregate files, uh, and do some combo handling. So in this case, same request we made before, but this time we're going to add the allow rollups equals true. Again, this is on by default. I turned it off uh, for the first example to make it a little less complex. 
Um, but in this case, you see we went from nine HTTP requests uh, down to five. So a 44% improvement by adding just this one flag. And now you can see that with the rollups on, we get the aggregate files for reset font grid and Yahoo done with that. Uh, here's an example with the filter. So same request. This time we pass in the filter. And for the JavaScript files, there are debug files available. And so in this case, element will give us a debug, and the tabby will also generate a debug file. And again, this is you know, probably most useful in a staging or development environment. So I want to cover some of the output methods that are available to the class. We, we've seen tags before. It's the one I've been using throughout. And again, this is the one that says, give me all the includes. Don't hold back. Probably going to go in the document head. It's going to give you all the JavaScript and CSS resources. I'll put it in one shot. We also have CSS and script methods. And as they sound, um, these will give you more control and allow you to call for just the CSS resources or just the JavaScript resources. And this is great because this, let, this lets you uh, comply with the standard performance guidelines of putting CSS into the head of the document and then trying to put uh, the JavaScript as low, as low in your document as you can, preferably you know, just before the closing body tag. We have embed, which says give me everything, don't hold back at all. So this actually gives you all of the dependencies, all of the code, and just embeds it into the page inside the, the link or the script notes. Like embed or like CSS and script, we have the CSS embed and the script embed, which gives you more control like CSS and script did, but it actually gives you all that raw code. So here you can embed just the CSS in the head, and embed just the script down in the closing body. And so this obviously eliminates the need for some of those HTTP requests to go back out and fetch that later on as the document loads. There are also a number of other formats that are available, um, which are useful for more programmatic purposes, perhaps writing your own combo handler or trying to determine what uh, files go into a component or a rollup. Uh, one of those methods is data. That will provide you with a PHP array of JavaScript and CSS components based on the, the components that you've passed into the load method. And you can see the path to the file and then the components <coughs> that have gone into creating this. Another method is JSON. So Basically the same as data, except this time we're getting a JSON structure back. Again, you can see it's broken up into JSON and CSS with the components that have gone into this. We also have raw, which is similar to embed, except it gives you just the raw code and doesn't give it to you inside of uh, the, the, the uh, either script or link notes. So I want to put this in context. Uh, we'll actually show a, a, a full document here uh, on the server. This, would, this is where you would do your initial loader setup, so creating the, the instance of the class, passing in the version number that you needed, calling the load method with the components that you actually want to load. So in this case, we would be loading a uh, calendar. And then in the head, we'd be uh, calling for our, just our CSS files. And then down in the, uh, just before the closing body tag, we would be calling for the script and then um, adding in any custom JavaScript that we need after that. What does that look, up, look like on the client? So obviously all the calculations are done on the server. By the time it hits the client and, and it renders, you have replaced the call for the CSS with the actual CSS resource, which in this case is calendar. Um, and we replaced uh, our call for JavaScript with Yahoo DOM event and calendar. Note that even if we just called calendar, we didn't actually specify that we needed Yahoo DOM event. 
dependency calculator would pick those up, would load them in the right order. It knows that it needs Yahoo DOM event to support calendar, so it would load them up. And then we just have our uh, custom JavaScript that's going to render the calendar into our uh, calendar node. So we'll touch on uh, one last thing here, which is uh, how do we integrate the loader with your own custom modules? Uh, so, we, so the third parameter to the constructor is that module list uh, of your custom modules. Those are to be given as an associative array. That array should consist of JavaScript and or CSS modules. doesn't have to be both. could be one or the other. The format of these modules mirror the standard format that's provided by the YUI metadata. Um, so there's examples in the documentation for this. You can also use um, all the metadata that's provided inside the lib meta folder of your download for seeing all the available options that go with it. Uh, one thing to note is that the module names must be unique. So obviously we don't want any collision between modules. Um, you could potentially reuse a YUI name if you've turned the YUI metadata off, but since you may turn that on at some other point, it's probably just, it makes sense to, to namespace these things or, or name them uniquely so you don't have any conflicts in the future. And finally, uh, custom module dependencies. So Modules can be dependent on other custom modules, so if you had dependencies between your own modules, um, or they can also be dependent on existing YUI modules. Here's an example of a custom module. So we're, we're pulling in our loader class. We're creating a, a, an array with uh, three custom modules inside it. Um, some important things to note on this, we're going to give it a name, and that's the name that we'll later pass to the load method. We're going to give it a type, either JavaScript, or JS, or CSS. Um, we can define uh, the full path to this custom module. And in this first one, um, you'll note that there's a required parameter on here, and that is uh, giving a name of another module. So we have uh, JSON module, which will relate to, to the JSON module that we're defining. And note that even though we define these in a separate order, so JSON module actually comes after. Because we have the requires flag, it knows the dependency. And so the loader's smart enough, even though there's a custom modules, to load them in the proper order. And finally, our third one is a custom CSS module with type CSS and then obviously the full path to that CSS. So the way we actually call these is the same exact way we called them before. And that's to create a new instance of the loader, pass in the version number, for YUI, um, in this case, we've given a, a, a cache key. We're passing in uh, as that third parameter our custom module list that we just defined. And then, uh, in this case, I'm turning off the last parameter. I'm passing false. I'm turning off the YUI metadata because, in this case, we're not using any YUI modules, so there's no real need for it. And then we call load, passing in the named parameters that we've given here. So. JSON module, custom CSS, custom JS. And what does that actually look like? So we have one CSS resource, that's our custom CSS. And we have two, we have two JavaScript resources. One is the uh, JSON utility from json.org, gives us the parse method. Uh, and then we have our you know, custom data file, which you know, is probably some JSON data that we need to parse while we brought in the JSON module. Same example, but this time with some YUI dependencies. So we call the loader. Again, we set up our, uh, in our, our array with two custom modules. This time, I've eliminated that JSON module. So instead of pulling in uh, the JSON uh, utility from json.org, we're going to go ahead and use the one that's native to YUI. And so you'll notice in this case, in my requires parameter, I've, I've removed JSON module and I've added, uh, we're going to go ahead and pull in event and DOM and the JSON module, and a custom CSS file. Same loader setup. <coughs> uh, 
what does this actually look like? Again, we pull in our custom CSS file, and then you'll notice that uh, we've picked up the Yahoo DOM event aggregate file, and we've picked up the JSON module and our custom module. Talk a little bit about combo handling. So the idea being, uh, with a combo handled, handled URL, we make a single request per resource type. Uh, so a single request to fetch all of our CSS, another request to fetch all of our JavaScript. We'll get it all in one shot. We get that single uh, resource back, cacheable. By default, we can take advantage of the Yahoo CDN. A lot of advantages to that with the caching and the um, uh, geographic placement. If you don't want to use the Yahoo CDN, and there are reasons, you know, some people that have for that, um, we'll talk a little bit about some of those in a minute. Uh, for whatever reason, the PHP loader does ship with an intrinsic uh, combo handling support. So that will allow you to actually do all the combining locally on your own servers without ever calling back to the Yahoo CDN. And touching on that, one reason that seems to come up quite often on the, on the forums that we get questions on is, can the Yahoo combo handler or the CDN today um, support SSL? The answer is no. But if you use the local combo handler with PHP loader and you have SSL configured on your own boxes, then you should be able to get this working without much issue. Uh, one thing to note here is the combo handling is currently limited to just YUI modules. So if you attempt to load in custom modules and you attempt to use the, com the combo handler, it's not going to fail, uh, but you'll not get the combo URLs. You'll get just the raw resources. Correct. That's right. Um, we are hoping down the line to be able to do all of it, but at this point it does not. Two more configuration options to add to the four we covered initially. Uh, one is combine. And this does what we just talked about. This combines all the uh, requests into a single, or all the resources into a single request and allows you to take advantage of the Yahoo CDN or use your own server <coughs> if you go with the next option, which is combo base. So by default, the combo base is the YUI Yahoo API's combo path. Uh, if you override this, and I'll show you an example of that, you can override to your own server path to either the uh, included combo.php script or to your own combo handler that does the same thing, uh, and then the server from your own uh, servers. Revisiting our basic example that we covered up front, but now with combo. So allow rollups is true, um, which is the default, but if we add combine equals true, loading the same set of modules, we now get just two HTTP requests. So we're down from nine all the way to two, so that's a 77% improvement over where we started. And you can see that we picked up, you know, we got the roll-up files. In this case, two different resources, but combined into one. Here we've got, we've got the Yahoo DOM event, the element, and the tab view. So two requests will give us all the functionality we need for our page. Same example, but now with the local combo handler. All we're doing here is setting the combo base, and we're going to set it to the path to the locally uh, included combo.php file, call for the same set of resources. And again, it's just two HTTP requests, but this time from our custom endpoint. <coughs> and the big difference here is you'll note that the starting path no longer points to the Yahoo CDN, but rather to our own custom path that we defined in combo base. A little bit of background about the combo handler. So if you extract the, combo, the, uh, the, the, the package that comes uh, that you download right into your web server it, and you put it right into the web root, it's probably fine. If you bury it somewhere else within your server, then you'll probably need to open up combo.php, uh, look at the very top of the file for the constant path to loader, and tweak that as needed for your own setup. Outside of that, um, it should just work. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, 
the uh, local combo handler tries to do all the same magic, sets the cache control, the expires, and the content type headers, tries to match those that are set on uh, the Yahoo CDN, um, you know, to, to pick up the same type of performance benefits. And uh, just one note, it makes use of the same metadata and the same core class that all the other examples uses. It just disassembles the URL, tries to construct the right loader calls for you, and then give you back just that single blob of JavaScript or CSS. So what does the future hold for PHP Loader? We're working, uh, obviously, right now uh, we've, we've shipped uh, the first beta, um, getting feedback from the community. We're working towards uh, the first production release. Uh, we're hoping in the next week or so we can get out a, a beta 2 with some fixes to the combo script um, and just continue driving towards the production release. Um, in the future, we hope to support combo URLs that are shorter. We know that with, uh, as the library becomes more module, especially like YUI3, how we have sub-modules and whatnot, we know that there are limitations to the URL uh, and we can blow by those even today with some combinations of, of YUI3. And so instead of specifying the long combo URLs that include the YUI version number with the full base path all the way down to the file, uh, we may uh, hopefully get to a point where we can say pass us a version number um, pass us a list of modules that you want to include uh, and then maybe some of the other optional parameters and keep that to a very short URL and be able to perform all the same magic that we did today. Uh, and last thing on this point is, you know, this is PHP, but obviously we're, we're hoping that um, people will help us port this to all the other popular languages out there. So, you know, if you're not using PHP or your company uses something else, um, certainly we're willing to help you as much as we can get it over to one of these languages. And if nobody else picks up Python, I might try. But I'm sure somebody can do better than me. That is it.